Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaaring nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema dahil welcome ang lahat dito para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aaral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Elaine Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Alright, isang makakalikasan at makabansang afternoon or hapon sa inyong lahat. So, welcome po sa panibagong uh, tutorial natin sa Itulay Online Tutorial. And this is Senior High School Earth and Life Science with me, your sir, your tutor, Tutor Tony. At nasa week 6 na po tayo mga ka-ELS. And very excited ako sa topic natin, natin ngayong afternoon kasi this is one of my favorite topics sa uh, biology.
Magandang araw, April and Marcos po, ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo, na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagkusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryong ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our Depth Ed EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, Depth Ed Tayo and Depth Ed Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Secunis and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guru. Tulong edukalidad. <clears throat> All right, so pasensya na po, nagkaroon lang na technical difficulty. So once again, this is Senior High School, uh, your E2Li online tutorial for Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So once again, we are now on week number six. And the process or the title of our uh, session it will be revolving around evolution. All right? So di ko alam kung saan ako naputol kanina. So balitan na lang natin yung mga slide. All right. So once again, I am Shooter Tony. Susumahan niyo po ako sa susunod na 40 minutes ng pagtalakay sa ating planeta at sa mga living organisms kasama tayong mga tao. Alright. Ayan, so kanina na-mention ko rin no, na every month of June ay sinaselebrate natin ang uh, Philippine Environment Month with the theme for this year, uh, Sama-samang pagkilos, sama-samang paghilom, ikaw at ako, tayo ang kalikasan. Okay, so we also are... Uh, commemorated or celebrated the 160th birth anniversary of our Philippine national hero, Dr. Jose Pirizal. So that was last Saturday, June 19, 2021. And just yet yesterday, we celebrated happy, uh, Father's Day. So happy Father's Day po sa ating lahat ng mga magigiting at mabubuting mga tatay natin all over the Philippines and all over the world. Especially sa aking mga tatay. Yes, may pa tatay. Biological father ko, si Captain Jose Taso Imson. Ayan, so ang aking tatay-tatayan, Tatay Pasho. And of course, my stepfather, uh, Rodolfo Barcelona. So happy Father's Day. And baka naputol din ako kanina, so I would just like to to re to recall or replay <laughs> my greetings kanina para sa aming pinakamamahal na principal Dr. Luis P. Tagayon. Happy Father's Day and happy happy birthday po Dr. Luis P. Tagayon. Salamat po sa inyong suporta sa inyong mga teachers sa Nova Liches High School. And so once again, we're actually using the pivot or the pivot module provided by Region 4A Calabarzon and time titled uh, The Process of Evolution. So malapit na tayo. Sabi ko nga, di ba, last time, konting tumbling na lang, mairaraos na natin ang school year na ito. So we're using module number 28 and module number 29. So I hope tuloy-tuloy na tayo, no? Uh, I hope and you are all set. So pasensya na po sa nag nagkaroon tayo ng uh, technical difficulties later on. So wag kayong mahihiyang mag-comment po later on us. Ating mga senior high school learners, I hope your pen and paper are ready. Your modules, kung may kopya kayo, or learning activity sheets. At ihanda na rin ang iyong isip at puso para sa ating session na ito. And of course, huwag pong kalilimutan na mag-comment, mag-
chat, magpa-shout out ng inyong mga pahabol na greetings o mga quick. So asahan ko po yan, hintayin ko po yung mga comments later on. Ayan, so let's have a quick review lang of our session last week. So last week, ang um, pinaka-focus ng ating session ay is about the huma, the body systems of spe, uh, of the humans and especially the representative animals we have learned that the body of an animal is like a well organized machine capable of performing different tasks at dahil yan sa mga special internal at external structures that work together in an orderly manner para maging mas efficient at effective ang kanila mga functions all right so let's try to recall the different body systems and i hope you can see my presentation right now Okay, so meron tayong dyan. Of course, letter A is your muscular system, followed by B, skeletal system. Letter C is, ayan, correct? You are, we have the nervous system. Letter D is the endocrine system, mga endocrine glands natin. Letter E, ayan, tumitibok-tibok, the puso, circulatory system. Of course, covering our body is our integumentary system, the hair, the skin, and the fingernails. Letter G is our immune system that's, uh, that help us to, to combat or to fight viruses and bacteria para hindi tayo makakasakit. Letter H is we have, of course, the respiratory system so, uh, supplying our body with enough oxygen. And gagamitin din, of course, ng next body system, which is letter I, digestive system, para makuha or ma-utilize yung glucose na nakukuha natin sa, sa pagkain na kinakain natin. Letter J is we have... Okay, that is your urinary system, the kidneys that filter the blood and other waste. And of course, letter K, a letter K, the reproductive system that of course aids in the reproduction or the perpetuation of life. So those are the body systems working together para ma-meet natin yung ano, mga requirements for our survival. Ayan, so let's proceed with our objectives for this session okay so first objective natin you have to explain how populations of organisms have changed and continue to change over time showing patterns of ayan tandaan ng phrase na to ha, descent with modification from common ancestors to produce the organismal diversity observed today so, di ba, sabi nga kanina natin sa title, no, evolution. So, if you would recall, evolution is one of the unifying themes in biology. And because of evolution, nagkaroon ng diversity ng different organisms sa ating planeta. So, ganun kalupit or ganun kaganda yung magic or yung process ng evolution. The final objective for today is we have to describe how the present system of classification of organisms is based on evolutionary relationships. So, paano nagagamit ang konsepto ng evolution sa pag identify at sa pag classify ng mga living organisms? Okay? So, those are our objectives for today. So, I hope you're all set. So, basahin lang natin yung mga shout-out natin for ito, mga early shout-outers natin. O, no? shout-out. Miss Lalien Ancheta, good afternoon po. Watching... From, ayan, lang po sa inyo. I hope you're all safe. Miss Lorna Senador, watching from St. Mary Elementary, watching from ENHS Tarlac Province, is Miss Carolyn Kim. We also have Lorraine Josette Pinla, good afternoon po, watching from San Roque Dau High School 11, Habaco, from Gascha. All right. It encompasses all living forms. All living organisms can undergo the process of evolution. Ayan yung taong yan. Kilala nyo ba yan? Sumamaya. I-refresh natin ang inyong mind tungkol sa kanya. Okay. Wait lang ha. Kasi meron tayo. Okay. Sa ating mga technical matters natin. Okay. So we are now ito. Uh... To give you an overview of the process of evolution, no? so tingnan natin yung evolution ng mobile phone. So imagine that. So from this, parang walkie-talkie, parang radio, advanced, nag-level up hanggang sa maging from keypad, di ba? Naging touchscreen na siya. So that's the concept of evolution sa mga mobile phones. 
Tingnan naman natin, tingnan naman natin sa evolution ng television. Ano nung may mga naabutan niyo dito? Ayan, sa akin, ayan 'di ba? So kinukuwento ng mga parents natin, 'di ba? O mga lolo at lola natin. So yung mga TV before ay parang nasa cabinet 1930s hanggang 1960s. Ayan, sa hanggang mag-evolve na siya from 1970s. Ito naabutan ko na ito, 1990s. Ganito na yung television set namin uh, during the, yung panahon na ako po ay <laughs> nag-aaral pa sa elementary. Hanggang 2000s hanggang ngayon, ngayon. 2010s and uh, recent televisions natin, mga smart televisions capable of using the internet. Ayan, minsan touchscreen na siya or diba, voice activated, uh, flat screen at saka mas tipid na rin siya sa Korean. This is the evolution of television. Of course, ayan, sa, isa sa mga, <laughs> pag maririnig din natin yung konsepto ng evolution sa anime or sa car- cartoon na uh, Pokemon or Pocket Monsters. So sa, sa animated series na to, nag evolve or nag, yeah, nag-undergo ng process ng evolution yung mga Pokemon o yung mga characters dito or yung mga monsters or mga animals dito. Okay? So evolution, uh, it says here para nag-level up, mas gumagaling ang level or mas tumataas ang level ng mga monsters. Nakakaroon sila ng panibago mga abilities. Siyempre, of course, nagbabago rin yung kanilang anyo and they level up. And ayan, sa more scientific na konsepto naman na evolution, we have here, ayan, ang example ko nilalagay dito is evolution ng, ng plants. So from our, from their ancestor green alga or the green algae, so from non-vascular, pag sinabi kasi ng non-vascular, wala silang totoong roots, stem or leaves, nagkaroon ng mga vascular plants. So yung mga non-vascular, maliliit lang yun, mga mga moss. And then eventually, there's a need para mag-evolve sila or magbago ang kanilang physical at saka internal structures. Ayan, nagkaroon nga, nag-emerge, nag-evolve sila or some of them evolved into vascular plants capable of producing seeds, flowers, and they have the true roots, stem, and leaves. Ayan, so ano nga ba talaga ang evolution? So scientifically speaking, evolution is the way that living things or a population of living things change over time. So kanina, na-mention ko na di ba kanina yung uh, unang tao yan. The first person who explained how evolution happens was Charles Darwin. Or si Charles Robert Darwin with his scientific theory of natural selection. So mamaya, i-recall natin yung konsepto na sinasabi niya. Ano ba yung natural selection na sinasabi ni Charles Darwin? So tandaan ulit learners, grade 11 tsaka grade 12, when we say evolution, all living organisms are capable of the process of undergoing evolution. Hindi lang sa tao, alright? Or sa mga animals. Ayan, so si Charles Darwin ay isang English naturalist. He observed that although individuals in a species shared similarities, they were not exact copies of each other. Diba? May mga, say for example, yung mga alaga nating pusa or mga, uh, mga alaga nating aso, they have similarities like they have four legs, they have tails, di ba? May, may, may backbone sila. So, yun ang mga na-observe niya. So, there were small differences or variations between them. And actually, si Charles Darwin, if you would recall, siya ay nag-travel sa sakay na HMS uh, Beagle sa England, of course. Uh, he also noticed that everything in the natural world was in competition. And ang pinaka-famous na pinuntahan or ginalugad, ayan, inimbestigahan kasama ng kanyang team ni Charles Darwin is yung Galapagos Island na malapit sa bans- bansang Ecuador. So Ecuador is malapit siya sa di ba, Ecuador. Nasa kontinente siya ng South America. So sabi niya, so, uh, as he went along with his journey, actually five years nga yun, no? so ganun ka... ka Katagal yung kanyang journey kasama ang iba pang mga naturalists, mga other scientists. So they have observed that or they've noticed that the winners were those that had characteristics which made them better adapted for survival. So yun kasi number one, eh, that living organisms should survive. So anong dapat niyang gawin or anong mga dapat niyang gawin para makapag-survive siya? Especially kapag ang environment ay minsan nagiging harsh. When we say hard, so say for example, lang ng bagyo, sobrang taas ng temperature, and all other factors. For example, they observe that the stronger, the faster, the cleverer, or the more attra- attractive than other species are more likely to reproduce. Of course, sila yung makakapagpasa ng kanilang traits or ng kanilang genes sa next na generations nila para maging uh, magamit ng mga susunod na generation. So yun yung konsepto niya ng kanyang uh, natural selection. So imagine his uh, voyage, ayan, yung uh, line ng kanyang uh, paglalakbay. So from 
Europe, no, from England. So her his team, parang ano eh, parang alamajelan, di ba? Parang nag-circumnavigate na sila ng buong, uh, buong planeta Earth. Ayan. So ganun ka-intense, ganun din of course, kadalikado, di ba? Kadalikado rin yung kanilang naging voyage. And uh, during their voyage, they observed specific animals. They even uh, uh, observed and collected mga fossils, mga fossils ng plants, mga fossils ng animals. And of course, being scientists and being naturalists by heart, of course, they observe that and take note of the similarities and other observations. So, ang sabi dito, individuals that were poorly adapted, ayan, were less likely to survive and their characteristics were not as likely to be inherited. Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi nag-fit, ayan, survival of the fittest nga, di ba? Pag hindi ka nag-fit sa environment kung saan ka naninirahan or nakatira, eventually, uh, kukonti ang number of population or yung population ng species mo and eventually it will become extinct. Tulad ng mga nangyari sa mga extinct na animals natin. So over time, the characteristics uh, that help survival become more common and a species gradually changes. Ayun. So there's a need nga. Di ba? Tulad ng sinasabi ko sa mga past sessions natin, there's a need so for for change. And so, at mag-start yan sa, of course, on the molecular level sa mga genes natin. Given enough time, these small changes can add up to the extent that a new species altogether can evolve. And because of evolution nga, nagkakaroon ng panibagong mga species. Tulad nito, they have observed sa Galapagos Island, nagkaroon ng iba't ibang klase ng, uh, ng tortoise. Okay? So tortoise are parang typically the turtles that are living on land. Ayan, so they have different structures depende sa kanilang environment na tinitinan. Or minsan, Oh, wala ako. Ayan. So, ayan. I'm back. <laughs> One of the uh, prominent animals din na na-observe ni... <clears throat> Isa sa mga prominent animals din na-observe ni uh, Charles Darwin is yung mga iguana. Ayan. So, meron tayong uh, land iguana at marine iguana. Ito yung common iguana kasi na nakikita natin, di ba? So we have land iguana in the Galapagos Island and yung mga marine iguana na na-observe ni Charles Darwin sa Galapagos Island. So he have noticed, of course, and his team, na naka-depend yung structure na yan sa mga, sa, sa diet or sa food na kinakain, sa habitat, and all other Factor. So that is a key para magkaroon or mag-evolve yung mga organisms. So nagkakaroon kumbaga ng variety ng mga species. Alright. Ayan. So Charles Darwin published his scientific theory of natural selection in a book called On the Origin of Species. Ayan ang pinaikling title. Pero ang title talaga niyan is The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. So sa librong ito or sa theory na ito, explain niya how every living thing is connected in a family tree that stretches back billions of years to the beginning of life on Earth. So naniniwala si Charles Darwin that we have a common ancestor and it so happened because of environmental factors and other factors. Figures for the organisms to, of course, para mag-survive na at para mag-evolve ng different characteristics at ibang, uh, iba't ibang uh, morphology at saka anatomy. Okay? That is the origin of the species. And he is also famous with his publication called The Descent of Man and Selection of in Relation, uh, The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to, to Sex. So dito naman, uh, certain characteristics are passed down from the essential species to the most recent species. So, kasi namin natin ancestral species, saan tayo nagmula? Yung pinaka-ancestors, mga pinaka-nimuno 
ng mga living organisms. Okay? So, tulad nga ng sinabi natin kanina, yung mga well-adapted to the environment have the greater chances of reproduction. Sila yung mananatili, sila yung mag-survive. And these individuals are said to have the higher fitness. So, sila yung ano, uh, nakapagpan, uh, napanindigan nila yung survival of the, the fittest. And let's take a look at this evolutionary tree. Okay, the evolutionary tree of fish na nagpapakita ng, nagpapakita ng descent, of, uh, descent of modification. Ayan, so makikita natin sa topmost, yung mga most recent organisms. Tapos yung pinaka sa baba, sa bottommost is the earliest forms. Ito yung sa evolution ng, uh, ng fish. Would you believe that the first fishes, they don't have jaws? Ayan, so they are jawless fishes, mga lampreys. Although may mga lampreys pa rin naman ngayon. Although other species, of course, nag-evolve para mas maging uh, capable pa sila ng ibang abilities at makasurvive sa iba't ibang klase ng environment. So tignan natin kung paano nakatulong yung pagkakaroon ng fins, mga palikpik, at saka ng, ng jaws. Ayan, the presence of paired fins could have improved the mobility and stability of these fishes while swimming. Ayan, di ba? So, actually, mga palikpik na yan, uh, mas nag i yan or tumutulong yan sa mga fishes para mas makapag-navigate sila sa lupa or makapag-swim sila ng maayos. And para mas, uh, they could have led to better chances of capturing food and escaping potential predators. Siyempre, mas mabilis yung movement nila, no? And yung second characteristics, yung presence of jaws, ayan, tulad ng sa dragonfish, na yan, na nasa diagram natin, allow this fish to consume larger amounts of food. Ayan, so nakakapag-consume ng larger amount of food and other fish, yun nga, nag-evolve nun sila into bigger fish. Kasi nga, mas marami silang natitake na, na, na food or na nutrients. Ayan, so those are some of the characteristics lang. So ang example lang natin dito is yung evolutionary tree ng mga isda. Okay, so let's talk about, mabilisan lang, the different mechanisms of evolution. We have genetic drift, we have migration, mutation, natural selection, and non-random mating. First is genetic drift. So pag sinabi natin genetic drift, sir, ano ba yun? This is the random manner in which a trait can be favored or lost in a given population. So tingnan natin dito yung population ng frogs right here. As you can see, the frogs have different colors. And based sa diagram, ano nangyari dito sa ating mga frogs na dito, nasa left side, mga red frogs natin, namatay sila. So they will not continue or they will not pass their genes or their traits to the next generations. So genetic drift is a change in the gene pool of a population due to chance. So in the original population, uh, the red frogs were eliminated and failed to breed. Of course nga, namatay sila. Their genes were not passed on and as a result, the frequencies of their genes change in the gene pool or yung collection ng genes sa isang particular na habitat. So nag-survive lang yung mga uh, bright green at saka dark green na no frogs. That is what we call the genetic trip. Again, that is the random manner in which a trait can be favored or lost in a given population. The next concept or mechanism of evolution is tinatawag natin na migration. You're familiar with this. So when we say migration, that is the movement of a species from one location to another. So other references, they are using the term gene flow. Yeah, let's have an example right here. Ayan. So sa biology, we have emigration and immigration. So pag emigration, letter E, it refers to the movement of population away from a location. So lumipat, uh, isang population siguro, I think this one is a population of uh, swan, perhaps, ayan, or ducks. Since they have long, they have long necks, I think they are, these are uh, mga swan nga or goose. Okay, that is the process of emigration, nag-emigrate siya. Tapos yung pinuntahan niya, ayan, emigration. Migration is the moves po. Punta siya sa population ng mga brown na mga goose or swan, di ba? So, ano mangyayari doon? Migrants change the distribution of genetic diversity among populations by modifying the allele frequencies or the proportion of members carrying a particular... variant of na magtawag natin na evolution. Next uh, mechanism is what we call genetic mutation. Ayan, the word is mutation. Nag-mutate. Nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa DNA sequence. Ayan.
type 1 genes. And of course, pag nagbago ang genotype, of course, may express yan sa phenotype. So maraming klase ng major. May nag-insert ng bago, may nade-delete and all. Ganyan. So what happens? Paano nakaka-apekto ang mutation sa evolution? Genetic mutations can cause alterations in the phenotypes of organisms. For example, a genetic mutation can cause changes in the body of the affected organism. So pwede mag-brought up yan ng panibago na namang species. So there's evolution. But uh, please take note, no, according to our reference, not all mutations are bad. Some are beneficial while most are neutral. One example or one of the best examples or uh, timely examples natin is yung evolution or yung mutation. So evolution, pwede yung, uh, it will take uh, thousands or millions of years to happen para makapag ma 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 makita natin yung pinaka evolution line or on what happens to the evolution of a particular organism. But for the microorganisms like viruses and bacteria, ayan, yun yung uh, SARS-CoV-2, di ba, yung nagkukos ng coronavirus disease, we actually had, kung naririnig nyo yan, of course, sa mga news natin, nagkakaroon ng panibagong variants. Ibig sabihin, nagkaka nagmimutate ang kanilang uh, gene sequences, ayan, kapag nasa loob sila ng host, Kasi nga, they are viruses, living things lang sila kapag nasa loob ng isang living organism. But ganun katindi ang kanilang mutation to the, to the point na nagkakaroon ng mas uh, nakakahawang variants, di ba? Kaya nga mas nagkakaroon pa na-extend pa nga yung mga uh, community, ano natin, di ba? Mga... Uh, Pag doon, mga quarantine procedures natin, mas lalo pa tayong nagkikwit kasi nga nagkakaroon ng mutation, nagkakaroon ng variants, panibagong variants ng mga viruses na to. So imagine this, kung ganun ka, ka, kabilis yung proseso ng evolution sa mga microorganisms na to. Okay? This is a genetic mutation. Other examples are the sharp paid dogs, yung mga wrinkled na skin, double muscle cattle, extra tooth cats, may mga curly hair sa mga dogs, and other examples yan, shown in our uh, presentation. So, ano ba yung nagkakos ng mutation? So, mas singit ko lang to, no? So, we have radiation. Yan, kaya nga minsan iniwasan natin too much exposure from sunlight kasi may UV rays yun. And of course, x-rays, may radiation yun. It can cause mutations sa ating mga cells. So, iwasan natin yan. Iwasan din natin yung mga chemicals coming from carcinogens, processed foods and preservatives, even uh, may mga chemicals, small amounts of cosmetics and cleaning products, and of course, infectious agents like the viruses and the, the bacteria. So, yun ang iwasan natin para iwasan din natin yung negative, downs, uh, negative side ng uh, mutation. Ayan, so let's, have, let's now have uh, Charles Darwin's natural selection. So, from the word natural selection. So, natural nature. So, sa kalikasan, select, pumipili. So, pumipili si nature. So, sino pinipili na yung must fit yung, nga, yung kanina sinasabi natin survival of the fittest uh, the fittest so ang sabi dito natural selection is the concept that spe uh, species with ideal characteristics will be able to survive the current status of the environment and then makapag-reproduce pa siya para mapasa na yung traits it operates on the concept of ayan nga isa sa mga unifying teams ng biology, so which is called adaptation. So, kailangan uh, kung saan ka man hat, uh, dalhin ng habitat mo or what class, anong klaseng environment nandun ka, kailangan matuto kang makapag-adapt. Para nangyari sa atin ngayon, di ba? So, wala na uh, karoon ng coronavirus disease. So, we don't have any choice but to adapt sa situation. We have to observe safety protocols. We have to isolate ourselves. Nagkaroon ng mas matinding pag-iingat and all. So that's a form of adaptation para makapag-survive tayo. Okay? Organisms that have favorable traits will enjoy greater fitness and reproductive success compared to the ones that do not. Okay? An example, ayan. Example natin is mga woolly mammoths. Are you familiar with this? Mga woolly mammoths are extinct animals na to. The mammoths with thicker fur survive better compared to the ones with thinner fur. Lalo na nagkaroon na ng ice age, di ba? So these were the ones that pass on their genetic material to their offspring. Although, syempre, on a certain point ng time ng Earth, so nag nagkaroon din ng extinction sa kanila. Although other species evolve into the animals that we know right now. So we have the animals, nga, the, the, the South African elephant at saka yung mga Asian elephants natin. So yung pinaka-ancestors nila, of course, are the mastodons and the, the mammoths right here. 
And according to yun nga, sa konsepto ni Charles Darwin ng natural selection, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. So kailangan we have to adapt, be ano, we have to ano, be flexible sa ating environment for us to to survive. And then finally, mabilis lang final mechanism ng ating uh, evolution is what we call the non-random mating. So this happens or occur when individuals prefer mates with particular superior physical characteristics, most favorable na characteristics or by the preference of individuals to mate with individuals similar to themselves. Ang example natin dyan is yung peacock at saka peahen. Peahen. Ayan. So ito yung male, of course. Nag-display na magandang patterns, colorful patterns right there. So individuals have more opportunity to mate than others and thus produce more offspring and more copies of their genes than others. Peahen. Choose mates on the basis of physical characteristics. So mas attractive sa kanila ang kanya mga peacocks na maganda yung patterns ng colors ng pinaka-feathers sila and all. So, it indicates a strong uh, genes, di ba? Such as the brightly, uh, brightly patterned tail feather, feathers. It causes evolution because it intrudes the natural pool of gene variations. So, I hope you're doing fine with our uh, session. So, we are... Uh, we have already discussed the different mechanisms of evolution. Reviewin lang natin. So, we have genetic drift, migration, mutation or genetic mutation, natural selection, and non-random mating. Yan. So those are the mechanisms of evolution. Let us now discuss the second concept, how evolution is used in the system of classification. So si evolution, it is actually related sa isa sa mga favorite ko rin na, na topics sa biology, which is taxonomy. Ayan. So tingnan natin. So how are evolutionary relationships determined? So let's try to recall terms like this, ayan, homologous structures. Homologous structures are parts that may perform different functions but they have evolved from a common ancestor. Tulad na pinapakita sa ating diagram right now. Ayan, so homologous structure is yung pinaka-arms natin compared sa arms ng mga cats, mga pet cats natin. So we have common ancestors. It indicates common ancestor kasi yung mga parts ay pareho. Homologous yung structures natin. Okay. Other homologous structures can be found, ayan, yung mga colored parts, no? So we have the humans right here, ayan, yung kanina sa cats, even the whales, ayan, and the bats, mga mammals, di ba? Mga mammals. So may similarities. That is what we call homologous structures. We also have what we call analogous structures. So these are, uh, they have similar functions that evolve separately. Ayan, tulad ng mga analogous structures ng mga wings ng bird, ng mga insects like this butterfly and of course the wings of the bats. Kaya medyo kinoconfuse ito yung mga evolutionary biologists natin sometimes or mga taxonomists kasi nga the wings will tell us that the, the, the organism can fly. So ano ba yung magiging origin nila? So birds, they have different ancestors of course. Siyempre hindi din tayo ang mga birds, hindi naman din related yan sa, sa insects at hindi yan related sa sa mga bats, which are the mammals. So these are the analogous structures na tinitingnan din or kinoconsider ng mga evolutionary biologists and taxonomists. And then finally, ito yung mas, ito yung mas, ano, mas complicated yet mas accurate. So gumagamit ng DNA sequences of organisms, kinagamit yan para matahe yung evolutionary relationships. Are the whales really related to us, mga mammals? So, you know, tinitingnan natin yung mga DNA sequences. The degree of similarity between sequences can be used as an indicator. And as you can see, when we trace the DNA sequences of the humans, the chimpanzees, and the macaque, or a kind of monkey, yan, ayan, may mga nagmamatch na DNA sequence. So, ibig sabihin nun, we're actually related to each other. Okay? Ayan, so taxonomy deals. When we say taxonomy class, kanina evolution, di ba? Ngayon taxonomy. Taxonomy deals primarily with the description, identification, nomenclature, and classification of organisms. I hope you can still remember yung concept no yan. Domain yung pinaka-greatest. Ayan, although mag-start minsan sa kingdom, so phylum, class, order, family, hanggang sa umabot siya sa genus at saka sa species, 
na ginagamit sa pag-device ng ating scientific names. Say for example, our national bird, the Philippine eagle, ayan yung pinaka-taxonomic categories niya, kingdom animalia, phylum chordata, class aves, the orders, the family, and ayun nga, scientific name niya is Phytic, Phyticophaga jeffrey. Ayan, so it's the Philippine eagle. So ginagamit yung scientific names para mas uh, magkaintindihan yung mga scientists, mas exact yung name na mapap- maibibigay. Hindi lang common names, no? Exact na names na may bibigay sa particular organism, especially sa mga bagong uh, discovered na mga species. Ang tawag natin doon is yung binomial nomenclature, uh, which contains the genus, ayan, and the species. So say for example, ayan, sa mga prominent na animal sa Bohol, sa Pilipinas, we have Tarsius, Si Ricta. So that is Sir Tarshir. That is the scientific name of the Tarshir. And of course, sa Mindoro, Bubalus Mindorensis. We have the, ayan, the Tamarau. Ayan, so the scientific name aids the scientists para magkaroon ng understanding between uh, scientists, scientists all over the world. Para hindi lang uh, common names yung pinag-uusapan nila. So may, may specific, may mas detailed na pangalan for, for every organism. Tulad ng mga pinangalan na animals kay Dr. Jose Rizal. Ayan, so alam niyo ba na may mga pinangalan animals? Kasi nung na, na, sa exile siya, during his exile sa Dapitan, sa Mindanao, no? So lumabas yung pagiging naturalist, pagiging scientist si Dr. Jose Rizal natin. So he was able to discover some uh, species of lizards, frogs, and beetle. Ayan, so pinangalan yan sa kanya. So sinunod sa kanya yung species name. So we have Draco Rizali. So from the uh, from his surname Rizal, Draco Rizali, the flying uh, species of flying lizard, Racophorus Rizali, or a type of a tree frog or frog, and of course the Apogonia Rizali, a type of beetle, and other uh, and, and other uh, plant and animal species pa. So nag ano kasi a uh, very uh, malapit sa puso ni Dr. Jose Rizal ang nature. So, he's a naturalist by heart. Ayan. So, he was able to discover, uh, dinocument niya, niya yan, yung mga animals na yan. So, in honor, para, in honor to him, to give him honor, uh, pinangalan sa kanya yung mga animal species na yan. Alright. So, let's now take a look at the concept of phylogeny this time. So, again, the word is phylogeny. It refers to the evolutionary history of organisms. So, na yung kanina sinasabi natin na tree, nagba-branch out from a common ancestors. Ayan. So these evolutionary relationships can be represented in a diagram known as the phylogenetic tree. Ayan. So parang nagba-branch out lang siya. So the branches indicates that there's a new species being formed. So there is evolution in action. Ayan. Other concepts, phylogenetics into account. Ayan. Tulad ng sinabi natin kanina, DNA sequences as well as, syempre, unang tinitignan dyan kasi yun yung mas, ob- uh, mas obvious, di ba? Tinitignan ng mga taxonomies natin, yung anatomical relationships. Ano ba yung uh, similarities or commonalities sa mga bagong species na yan sa other existing species na may scientific name na? Tinitignan yung anatomy, of course. Since closely related organisms have common sequences, then they should also share many common characteristics. Okay? Tulad ng ano, mga vertebrates, of course, nandiyan yung, uh, when we say vertebrates, may mga backbones yan, di ba? We have the birds, the reptiles, the fish, the amphibians, and the mammals. Okay? And scientists also classify species based on their shared features. Tulad ng nasa diagram natin right now. Ayan, the more features that are shared, the more likely the species are to be closely related in evolution. So of course, uh, I think na, na-mention ko na to sa mga past sessions natin. No? So from reptiles, some of the reptiles na evolved yan, naging birds, and other reptiles evolved into uh, mammals. Okay? So ganun ka, tindi. Ganun ka, kaganda yung konsepto ng evolution. And... We also have, of course, the phylogenetic tree structure. Ayan, makikita niyo yan sa mga reference natin. So sa ancestors, we have what we call the root, the branch point. mag extend na yung mga branches. So tignan natin, try natin to answer the module 29, page 5. Ang pagpipilian natin is the branch point, basal taxon, sister taxa, polytomy, and root. Start tayo sa pinakamababa. Of course, that is your root. It indicates that an ancestral lineage give rise to all organisms on the tree. 
So we have the root. Number four is what we call the branch point. Ayan na, nagsanga na siya. No? Branch point is the point where split occurs. So nagkakaroon ng diversity kasi. No? So kailangan mahiwalay siya ng, ng branch. Number three is what we call the basal taxon. Lineage that evolved early from the root and remains unbranched. So nag-stop ni evolution sa kanya. Next is the polytomy. Polytomy is the branch with more than two lineages. So nagkakaroon na ng panibagong mga organisms yan. Kaya nga poly means many. And of course, pwede siya mag-branch out into sister taxa. Pag sinabi naman natin sister taxa, these are the point of two lineages stem from the same branch. Okay, si Spire kayo at na-bless sa ating session. So since we are we celebrate, we just celebrated his, uh, results, 160th birthday, birth anniversary. So, kuwala lang tayo ng quotation from him. So, according to our national hero, Sarizal, on this battlefield, man has no better weapon than his intelligence. No other force but his heart. So, ganun, in-emphasize sa ating national hero ang kahalagahan ng paghubog ng ating kaisipan, talino. At syempre, hindi lang dapat talino. Dapat kasama ang puso. So, that ends our... Uh, session for Earth and Life Science week number, ayan, week number six, di ko na bago, week number six. Thank you very much for, for joining me. So you can reach me out via Gmail, Facebook, Wakelet, and YouTube sa Mr. Voice Educator PH. Subscribe na po kayo dyan. Ayan, so I hope you'll have a great week ahead. So marami pong salamat. Stay safe. God bless po sa ating lahat. Susunod na po si Tutor Cat for Media and Information Literacy. So once again, this is Tutor Tony saying goodbye and God bless. Paalam po. Bye! Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!